Galaxy Note 10 Lite has been around for about 10 months now. If you guys have been following me for a while, you must have an idea about my coverage on the Note 10 Lite. I have made over 10 different videos on this phone and since then, a lot has changed which brings us to its long term review. Let me first get its specs out of the way just for a refresh. Note 10 Lite's latest price for different regions is also appearing on your screen. This phone was released alongside the Galaxy S10 Lite and like the S10 Lite, it was apparently a cheap Galaxy Note 10 with the characteristics similar to the flagship Note 10. But Samsung made some unusual compromises on this phone. While the S10 Lite brought a flagship chipset and an amazing display, the Note 10 Lite came out as a rather underpowered device with compromises on its screen too. When I reviewed this phone back in March, I had some serious concerns with the performance and the software of this phone and I still have those concerns and I'll tell you guys how much sense this device makes today when we have the phones like S20 FE out and we are expecting a Note 20 FE and when Samsung's chipset game is about to get a whole lot better. But before that, I would like to make a few things clear. As a reviewer, it is my job to talk about the facts. It is my responsibility to tell you guys each and everything loud and clear. And if the truth goes against a device, that doesn't mean I hate the brand or the device. I am just telling you what you will get for your hard earned money and in the end, it is your own choice whether you want to get a certain device or not. I have got a lot of hate comments on my Note 10 Lite videos, but those will not change the truth about this device. It is what it is. Anyways, let's get back to the phone. As of today, this phone still has a very nice and premium feeling build and it is being offered in beautiful colors. Instead of being a sub-flagship device, this phone seemed more like a mid-range device stretched towards the flagship segment. Note 10 Lite was powered by the Exynos 9810 chipset, a 10 nanometer chipset that we got in the Note 9 back in the year 2018. At first, it is Exynos and second, it is a 2 year old chipset and in just one month, it will be 3 year old. Flagship chipsets from 2018 are still better than mid-range chipsets of 2020. For example, the Exynos 9810's performance is slightly better than the Snapdragon 765G 7 nanometer chipset of today. In that perspective, the chipset is still acceptable but its issues such as the way it drains the battery and the way it heats up around the camera module is not acceptable. It is very easy for this phone to hit 60 frames per second for the games like PUBG and Call of Duty Mobile. It offers a very nice experience on that huge screen. But these issues are something that you will definitely notice once you start using this device on a daily basis. This phone packs a RAM of 8 gigs, which is still more than Apple's latest flagship. Its internal storage is 1 to 8 gigs. It's a UFS 2.1 storage standard. And you can also use that micro SD card slot to expand it further. It is definitely a powerful device on paper, but only as long as you don't have an idea about its technical caveats. On the software side, we got the One UI on this phone when it was launched earlier. Since then, this phone has received two major software updates including the One UI 2.1 and the One UI 2.5. It has most of the features that a Samsung flagship usually has, but it misses the features that make a flagship a flagship. For instance, you won't find the wireless text or even the decks in this phone. We don't have uh, the wireless charging or wireless power share either and a number of other features are missing. This phone did not originally belong to the mid-range segment but even then we did not get the full-fledged flagship features. Samsung might have made this compromise on the Note 10 Lite but it definitely learned from its mistake and gave a full flagship software experience on the S20 FE and now I am expecting the same on the Note 20 FE. Only if that device comes out for real. We can expect some massive up Samsung has further promised 3 years of software updates on the Note 10 Lite. This phone will go all the way up to Android 13 and it will definitely get the One UI 3.0 and the upcoming versions of the One UI. The Note 9 with the same hardware will not be able to make it to Android 13 and uh, it might not be able to make it to Android 12 either. But this Note 10 Lite will and this makes this device a better pick. The next thing I would like to talk about is the camera setup. This phone has a triple camera setup along with a telephoto lens. 
but this camera setup is something really interesting. Telephoto lens is definitely one of the most useful add-ons, but the main camera of this phone is the Sony IMX333 sensor, the sensor that we got on the S8 and the S8 Plus. Yes, the Galaxy S8, the phone that was released in 2017. Now if you compare the Galaxy S8 from 2017 to the Galaxy A71 from 2020, the S8 might still have a slightly better camera because it was a flagship but the thing is, if Samsung had to use an old camera sensor, it could use the Note 9's camera sensor or even the camera sensor it used in the S9 or in the S10 Lite. But that's how the companies keep the cost low and we really don't know about their backend strategies. Its camera application has all the new features like the single take, the night mode, a pro mode with raw support, a pro video mode. But yeah, this is not the flagship camera app as it misses the motion detection feature for super slow-mo and it also doesn't have the pro video resolution options in the camera settings. Camera result on this phone is fine, it produces warm images and takes very natural selfies as well. The videos come out very good, Note 10 Lite is equipped with optical image stabilization which works in its 30 frames per second modes. We do get an amazing screen on this phone but let me clarify this as well. On the Note 10 Lite we get the Super AMOLED screen but on the S10 Lite we get the Super AMOLED Plus screen. The normal Super AMOLED screen doesn't perform as good as the AMOLED Plus screen when you are using the phone under bright sunshine. And by the way we get the same Super AMOLED on the S20 FE so no idea what Samsung is exactly doing here. The S10 Lite's display looks superior to me as compared to the Note 10 Lite and the S20 FE's display. The screen offers great colors, no problems uh, while viewing the screen from different angles. The punch hole is slightly big but it is still a modern display that we don't get from the most popular smartphone makers even in their flagship devices. So full marks to Samsung for giving us this amazing screen on the Note 10 Lite. And yeah, underneath the screen we do get a fingerprint scanner which in my opinion is not that fast. This needs further improvement for sure. There is a 4500mAh battery in this phone and it brought a 25W charger out of the box. These two things made this phone a real powerhouse. Its battery performance is still good. It is a lot more better than the new phones with 120Hz screens. Only that Exynos element is what brings its battery performance a bit down. Otherwise. The battery on this one is big enough. I conducted one battery rain test in February and uh, one just a few days back. In the latest test, this phone gave me a screen on time of 6 hours and 51 minutes and it took a little over 1 hour to fully charge. The numbers are still better than many amazing devices that came around just now. Let's talk about the stuff that makes this device stand out even today. The Note 10 Lite brings a headphone jack which is becoming a thing of the past but it's such a good thing to have it on this kind of device. The S Pen, the element that makes it a note, is the most attractive point of this phone and you can't deny how useful the S Pen is, especially for the creative hands and creative minds. The S Pen alone overcomes the performance caveats of this phone. I only have issues with its chipset, even that compromised camera and the software is something that I can accept. I wish we could have the S Pen awesomeness over the top of a really good chipset. But if you are someone who uses the S Pen a lot, the performance shouldn't really matter to you. Your S Pen related applications should run super fine on this smartphone. Sadly, the Note 10 Lite wasn't offered with a Snapdragon chipset and there wasn't even a 5G version of this phone. A solid upgrade is due in the Note Lite series. We have a successor of the S Pen Lite which fixes a number of the previous issues and uh, comes out as a great overall package. And I am personally expecting something similar to happen in the Note Lite lineup. I hope the Note 20 FE, if it comes out, gives us a real full flagship experience with an improved camera and improved overall performance. And I do hope we uh, get a 5G version of the upcoming Galaxy Note 20 Fan Edition. Let me know about your thoughts on this device in the comments below. If you like this device, please hit the thumbs up button and if you loved it, please subscribe. 
with that said i will sign off and see you all in the next video